Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming this uh, first thing in the morning before you start to walk around to the expo. Um, happy to be here. Um, with my accent, you'll notice that I'm from America, from Philadelphia. Um, I've been a physiotherapist 24 years, and I have worked in wheeled seating mobility for that long. So um, one of my passions and uh, good topics this morning is going to be about choosing a wheelchair cushion and back. I'm going to do that within 30 minutes, and then anyone who wants to follow up with me, I'm the channel manager and uh, physio at uh, Invacare, so you can find me down towards the, uh, the other end of this hall. So let me get right into the topic since we have limited time. I think one of the things that we always talk about is understanding the goals of the end user. That's really what this is about, and as any of the clinicians physios or OTs that are in the room that are prescribing, it's important to look at certain principles. It's also important for any of the end users, any of you that are using the equipment, to be really clear to communicate to us what you've used in the past, what worked, what didn't, why maybe you want to look at something different, and what, you know, what you're looking for. So please make sure to share that. Um, this is not Photoshop. This is actually um, a hobby of mine, which is uh, fernal photos and, and buying um, uh, photos at a, a craft show. And this gentleman is actually from Sudan. And I thought that he really represents um, the epitome of recognizing um, what his goals were and that he had his own solution to actually his mobility issue. The big joke in America um, that one of my colleagues here will understand is that as our funding goes down, um, we hope that you don't have to revert to this type of manual hybrid power mobility. So that is what I used to say, and I'll, I'll say it here as well. So, But let's go on. Um, uh, most of uh, my clinical colleagues and I agree that, that wheelchair seating is like fitting a prosthetic leg, okay? We can't oversize. The equipment, um, a lot of times we try to put growth into something, but if that doesn't actually hold the postures of that individual and doesn't give you good function and a good postural stability in order to either have your arms moving in propulsion or reaching or bending over or driving a power chair, it doesn't matter. You have to find that actual you know, functional fit and a very precise fit. So. A lot of us will talk about that in terms, for the especially for the clinicians in the room, the OTs and PTs that are prescribing. There are some good resources that um, we look to, and from America, there's a, a an organization called the Rehab Engineering Society of North America. But those are those are that website is resna.org, and there are these resources that are downloadable if you want to learn more about prescribing wheelchairs, what goes into writing a letter of justification. There are different documents that specify uh, principles for ultra lightweight manual wheelchairs. There are principles for power and power tilt recline and the functionalities of standing and so it can go on from there. If you'd like more information you can come and see me at the Invacare booth and I can talk to you more about it and maybe even show it to you online. One of the things that you can't talk about of a cushion or prescribing a back is, is, is making sure that in the process you have what they call, what we call a mat assessment. That means making sure that your evaluation for this equipment is out of the current chair and the current configuration of the chair that you're in. Because it's quite possible to have a posture that we might assume is yours, and that might be accounted to the way that your current chair is set up now. That doesn't mean it was optimized for your posture. It might mean that it's causing you to slump and be out of position, or your pelvis to tip back. So we really encourage across the board, no matter what environment you're in, whether you're at the hospital or in your home, to find a solid support surface where you can look at the posture, look at your balance, look at your spinal column and the curvatures or your pelvis, and also to take really accurate measurements. So it's important to know a very precise, do you have uh, adequate hip range of motion to fit into a wheelchair that's sitting with the seat flat and the back upright, 
or are you being sort of you know, pushed into that position, but your body doesn't really fit? And then we know that we need to change the angles. Deciding where the range of motion is at the knee is important because that determines where we can put your legs with the front frame angle and the leg rest and the angle that you're able to tolerate. So all of those principles, just an, a, general, a general statement is to make sure that you have a mat assessment and that someone precisely looks at all of your joint range of motion, lying down and then actually sitting up on the edge of a mat table or at least a hard chair that's not the wheelchair. What we do, and for the clinicians especially in the room, is we look at a precise client measurements. If you can get all of those measurements and you'd like a form like this, um, any of the clinical educators, myself, uh, Maggie is here in the audience, anybody can make sure that we provide you with a resource for what measurements to gain. A lot of the order forms now from all of the manufacturers will also have a chart so that those can be captured and we can always go back to them as we decide what back, what cushion. Sometimes they're measured differently, but as long as we have those accurate measurements, we know how to work with the equipment prescription. There is a different chart and I can resource this to motionconcepts.com. It is a download for a bariatric measurement chart now. So for the clinicians in the room or any of the reps from the companies, the manuf uh, sorry, our suppliers, it's really important to look at overall total width might be very different than our standard measurements that we normally take. So please let me know if you need more information on that, but also an important resource. We also will look at different companies will have different order forms and different measurements, but all of those components on a scripted complex manual chair are gonna be very precise. So we wanna take your measurements of your body and then match them to the measurements that are you know, of that particular manufacturer, of that particular make and model. And so those vary, but with the expertise of a lot of the equipment suppliers that are here today, and with the support of the manufacturers themselves, we can help you to work through that. One of the most important things about gaining a good posture and feeling as if you're able to fully breathe, have as much range of motion in your arms if they are able to move, or even just be able to control a joystick on a power chair, all depends on having good spinal support as well as a cushion or a support surface in your chair. So every seating system is made up of a good support cushion, okay, with the right uh, contours, the right shape, and also a supportive backrest that is going to give you really good spinal support so that you're able to sit as upright as possible and hopefully optimize your breathing and respiration and your ability to keep your head up and to you know, engage in all the activities that are meaningful to you. So for good spine posture, it's important to have both. Okay, um, if you're interested in, uh, for the clinicians, we, I do have some posters that talk about different postural asymmetries. For the end users and all of our audience that are listening in today, um, we look at different postures that may or may not be a part of your body shape or it could be the setup of the wheelchair. And so we will look at whether those postures are somewhat flexible and we can improve upon them or whether you have a posture that needs to be accommodated and sort of supported the best that we can. And there are different products, different shapes, different sizes, and all individually uh, prescribed for exactly that reason. So we have some resources for the clinicians or any of the end users. You're more than happy to have a poster. I have, uh, I have tons of them there. We um, are just about to release uh, another clinical resource on uh, skin protection, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about a little bit as we go forward right now. So one of the principles or the terms that I may have used is postural support or pelvic stability. So everything that we look at when we look at an, a clinical evaluation of someone that's going to use a piece of mobility, a wheeled, a wheeled mobility device, is what is the position of the actual pelvis 
and is that able to be shifted more from a posterior position to a more neutral position and whether that is something that will help with your function um, or your balance, your ability to reach, your ability to do things that, that matter to you. So we definitely want pelvic stability that also helps with pressure management because we don't want you sitting in a position that could cause more pressure on the bones of the pelvis. One of the things that certainly clinicians and the suppliers that are evaluating you or any of the manufacturers that work with you are concerned about is minimizing pressure. Any time that someone is immobile or sitting in a chair and is sitting for a significant period of time and is not able to shift their body weight or you know sit in different surfaces, anybody that sits has the risk of skin breakdown. And what that means is that can come from moisture, that can come from just direct pressure on the sit bones where you don't shift your weight away from that. Blood flow brings oxygen, oxygen brings tissue health, and that's what's really important for all of us to figure out. So any direct pressure can be an issue without unweighting, unweighting your bottom and lifting or shifting side or leaning all the way forward. We no longer recommend to use your arms to try to push up because actually for your shoulder integrity and it's actually the time that you'd need to hold your bottom up above the seat probably isn't significant enough to actually encourage the right amount of blood flow and oxygenation to the tissues. So talking to your, your prescribing therapist or any of your health professionals about what is the most effective way for you to weight shift is really, really important. One of the other things is to start as you go around the expo today is ask the manufacturers, any of the suppliers have equipment out to take off the cover of the cushion. Take off the cover and take a look at the shape take a look at how it's designed, how it's made, and how, what are the principles of managing pressure and reducing pressure. And one of them is by offloading the weight. Can I take the weight away from my really bony sit bones, okay, and actually transfer it to some soft tissues that are along my thigh? So a lot of the design of the cushion, you need to take a look at that. One of the other things to look at is what is the ability to immerse or to sink into or sit into the cushion so that you actually begin to get some pressure reduction from that. Another principle is envelopment and that's a matter of looking at the shape of the contours and do they match your shape. So not every cushion, um, not every foam or gel or fluid or air cushion is necessarily better. One's not better than the other necessarily. It means that it needs to meet your postural needs, your skin protection needs, and also your functional stability and how it fits you. So it really requires trialing the equipment that you're considering getting and getting funded, whether you're paying for it or whether your funder is paying for it. So asking for even more than just an hour trial, say, can I borrow that cushion for the next two or three days? Can I see how it affects my ability to transfer uh, to the front of the cushion and do a stand transfer or do a lateral transfer to my bed? Because some of those properties might be really good for pressure but you may not be able to move easily from that cushion onto your bed or onto some other chair unless you give it a trial. One of the other things we worry about, which I sort of just mentioned in the transfers, is are you sliding across a surface that actually can cause friction on the skin? It's on the, actually on the surface of the skin. So you might see some redness or abrasion from that, and that's because you're sliding across surfaces and that actually starts to affect the skin integrity. Friction is a little bit different than shearing. Shearing actually causes the tissues in your butt that you can't see unless you were to do certain mapping or even functional MRI testing. It's a bit more to go into than we can right now, but you can start to actually see the tissues deform under the skin. And what that's doing is, is cutting off blood flow. 
So that can cause pressure issues for you. So looking at the way that you use the equipment, that you transfer, that you get back in a position in the wheelchair is really, really important for managing that. And you can see just another picture of what we mean by shearing. It's pushing and displacing the tissues underneath the surface of the skin. Temperature and moisture can also be an issue. I mentioned moisture earlier. That's from just, unfortunately, bowel and bladder issues that can be a part of uh, many, many uh, different uh, physical uh, disabilities and abilities. But what we want to look out for is how to minimize that increase in temperature because that also can protect the skin. So choosing the backrest for postural stability no matter what you do in the contours of the cushion, I'll repeat, we need to make sure we have the backrest in a position that's going to really help support the pelvis, support the spine, but also maximize any movement that we can get for function as far as reaching. So a lot of the contours of the backs are very different. Where the lateral support against the body can be very different, but we certainly know that we want to capture the backrest low on the pelvis so that we actually can help control, I'm trying to stay within the microphone, but actually try to control the tip of the pelvis so that we're able to change that posture and maintain it. So one of the things that can happen early on or even down the road, it doesn't matter whether you are a, a new user or whether you're a repeat user, is to do some trialing with the equipment and with the different setup. Some of the backs will have more contour, some will be a different height, and your therapist can really talk you through the advantage and, and evaluate your posture trialing different things. What I tend to do is, is look at someone from the side, look at them from the back, um, and then if I can, actually have a trial in motion. So what's important is, is to look at the comfort oh, of the push, or have someone really, unfortunately, this gentleman is a, new, a newer injury, has a lot of initial weakness, and simply needs more posterior, midline, spinal support so that he doesn't continue to fall back over the top of that back. The reason for that is, is not only to develop strength, but it's also for good breathing and respiration, and he's really not able to get enough stability to have a full, good propulsion stroke. When we talk about and have some expo of the wheelchair sports today, I look at somebody propelling all day, every day as a sport. It's the sport of everyday function. So if you're not in an optimal position and you don't have the right support, it's going to affect your ability to use your mobility device in a really meaningful way. Let's look at a change in a higher back. And if you watch his push through on the wheels, you can see an increased comfort in actually letting go of the wheel. Instead of doing tiny little short pushes, he actually has the stability to let go and do more of a full propulsion stroke. He has a more upright spine. We talked about that for breathing, respiration, and range of motion of the upper body. So it's really important to look at it in that regard. Now, I've tried to um, stay within the confines of the um, presentation length, so there would be time for questions. So at this time, I'll entertain any questions. You can um, see me at the Invacare booth down at the other end, right in front of the Wheelchair Sports Expo area. I will be here until 4 o'clock. Maybe not 4.01, but I'll definitely be here till 4. Okay, thank you so much for your attention this morning. I really appreciate it. from a rural area mm -hmm. and that being able to try no cushion for more than an hour is impossible. Yes, um, this lady lives in a rural area and she's finding it very difficult to find, to find a cushion that she can sit in for more than an hour.
So the question was, is um, someone finding a cushion that um, unfortunately you're not able to tolerate for more than an hour? So there's a couple things that are going on. It absolutely would be to look at the, the, um, what, the, what the cushion properties are. Is it foam? What type of foam? Is it foam with a gel? Is it foam with a fluid? Is it air? Um, it also requires looking at what your pressure management program is, meaning how often have you been instructed to weight shift? How, how do you weight shift? In other words, we just, you kind of looked at me when we talked about sort of using the arms versus a lean forward or lean to the side. A lot of those principles that we teach if you're in a rehab setting are very different now based on some of the research that has come that really requires at least three to five minutes of the unweighting of the area. But a lot of times in a manual chair, you have to have a good program throughout the whole day of how often you need to shift your weight. When you shift your weight, are you actually able to unweight that area? And so it probably requires a bit more conversation and I'm more than happy to have that with you after I'm done speaking. Okay. We're going to check and see if there's any online questions before we wrap up. It appears that we don't have any more questions. If you're more comfortable asking in a one-on-one -on -one situation, I think you know where to find me. So thank you for your attention, and I'm going to step off now. Thank you.